I've been meaning to tell you this for a while now, so here it goes. I've started therapy. It's not easy to admit that publicly, but I think we need to work on destigmatizing caring for our mental health. For me and many others, therapy starts with addressing our irrational thoughts. No, this is not gonna be a negative video. I'm simply gonna share the 10 most common destructive thought patterns that we all succumb to as humans. Try identifying which categories your thoughts fall into to prevent them from ruining your mood, performance, or even relationship. What color is this block? Is it white or is it black? Well, you might be thinking it's neither, or it's both, and you'd be right. It's gray, it's in the middle, it's a mixture of two separate things. There's nuance here. When you're dealing with all or nothing thinking, however, you lose sight of this nuance. You choose to see the image as an absolute, which just isn't reality. By using this type of dichotomous vocabulary, you lose the ability to describe yourself and even the world. You are not just a pure failure or pure success. You, my friend, are a gray square. Have you ever been broken up with, cheated on, ghosted? Yeah, me too. When you're overgeneralizing, you can take those feelings of heartbreak, sadness, and insecurity and think, if my partner doesn't love me, then nobody could love me. This is a distortion of reality and is not only demoralizing, but also flat out untrue. Just because one person didn't love you doesn't mean you can't find love from your family, friends, coworkers, or another romantic partner. Humans love slapping labels on things. Heck, in this video, I'm labeling 10 cognitive distortions. However, labeling comes with some risks, especially when it comes to evaluating our own performance. It's easy to get a bad grade on a test and label yourself a failure. While you may have been unsuccessful there, you can't use that as the official barometer for your entire life. In fact, many hyper successful people were failures first. Steve Jobs got fired from Apple, then came back to create the iPhone. Bill Gates dropped out of Harvard and then became the richest person in the world. Oprah was fired from her job as a news anchor before becoming the biggest TV show host of all time. Had any of these people labeled themselves as failures, they would have never become the successes they are today. A word does not define you. A mental filter is an opposite to overgeneralization, but with the same negative outcome. It's when we take one small negative event and focus on it exclusively. Sometimes I'll post a video and scroll through the comment section, blinded to the thousands of positive comments. At that point, the critical comments all seem valid, while the positive ones don't really count. Essentially, mental filtering causes us to silence large swaths of positive information coming our way. In order to fight this and get an authentic view of reality, we really have to remind ourselves to focus on the full picture. Imagine you're walking down the street and you spot someone you know. You go to wave and say hello, but realize they're completely snubbing you. You jump to the conclusion that this person doesn't care about you, doesn't like you, has no interest in speaking to you. In reality, this person just lost their job. Their relationship of 10 years has just ended, and they're only thinking about themselves and how bad their life currently is. They didn't even notice you. We all come to thousands of conclusions every day. Just make sure you have all the information before jumping to them. Jump to conclusions. Have you ever been out in the woods hunting for food when a saber-toothed tiger leaps out of a cave and lunges at your throat? Didn't think so. But our ancestors sure experienced that, which is why they developed razor-sharp survival mechanisms to identify potential threats. Today, we've made our world a much safer place to live. However, our anxiety still thrives. But instead of true threats like bears, bears, we're now reacting to a spider in the tub. Yes, yeah, spiders can be dangerous, but 99% of the time, the spider crawling up your shower curtain is harmless. Our horror and scream from seeing a tiny critter is magnification. It's a cognitive distortion where we magnify the potential threat of a situation to unrealistic proportions. Think phobias. You're scrolling through Instagram and notice your partner's ex has liked their recent photo. All of a sudden, your emotions kick into high gear and you begin to fear your partner's cheating on you. Why would their ex be liking their photo? I knew they've been talking. They're getting back together. Are they already back together? Freeze. You've just fallen victim to emotional reasoning. The quick jolt of jealousy and emotional security you might have had just created a lifetime movie in your imagination. Emotions are a crucial part of what it means to be human, but the reality is that emotions can be misleading, especially when we're angry. Just because we feel a sense of infidelity does not make it reality. We have these idealized versions of ourselves and others that are often impossible to live up to. We target should statements at people like, she should have been nicer, or they should pay me more. We target them at ourselves. I shouldn't have eaten that extra slice of pizza, or I should have gone to bed earlier. These statements can take judgmental forms extending beyond the word should, must, never, need, ought, can't, have to. These words breed guilt, frustration, and anger. Know that you cannot control others, but you can be kinder to yourself. 
You pride yourself on being punctual to work. On the day of the big meeting, you get in your car and out of nowhere, there's a thunderstorm. Just as you're turning onto the on-ramp, the big rig in front of you flips over, blocking all of the lanes. You wind up getting to work an hour late and miss the whole meeting. It might feel like you're to blame and you personalize this mistake. When in reality, you have no control over the weather, no control over the truck, certainly no control over the cleanup. The reality is that this was an unpredictable event and the world is a complex place where your control is limited. This is the most toxic thought that I have and it happens frequently. Discounting the positive means ignoring genuinely great things that you've achieved. For example, in reality, I should feel proud of all the years I spent working to become a doctor. I went to an accelerated medical program. I did my residency. I studied for thousands of hours to earn the title of doctor. But I write off these achievements as nothing special, even at times comparing myself to my father, who also became a doctor, but did it twice, once in Russia, once again in America as an immigrant in a new language. This is a prime example of discounting the positive, and I'm working hard to recognize that celebrating one's accomplishments doesn't have to be considered conceited or arrogant. Here's the most offensive question I get asked as a doctor. Click here to check that video out, and as always, stay happy and healthy.